On problem 6, we're supposed to solve for x, simplify radicals, and use imaginary numbers if appropriate. When solving quadratic equations, you've got three methods to choose from. You could factor, in which case you need to get it equal to 0. You can convert to vertex form, or you can use quadratic formula, in which case you need to get it equal to 0. Um, any of these methods would work on this equation. I'm going to go ahead and subtract 20 from both sides to get it equal to 0. And it looks like this one is going to be factorable. I can also tell that by looking at the choices. All the choices are whole number solutions. None of them are imaginary. None of them have simplified square roots. So that's another hint that, uh, that this polynomial is going to be factorable. So I'm going to go ahead and use that method and set up my parentheses. I need x's in the front to create the x squared in the original polynomial. Then I need to determine what two numbers multiply to negative 20 and add to positive 8. If I'm going to multiply to a negative but add to a positive, the only way to make that happen is to use one positive number and one negative number. And then the two numbers that would multiply to 20 and add to 8 would be positive 10 and negative 2. Since I'm adding to a positive 8, I'm adding to a positive number, that means that the bigger number between my choices, 10 and negative 2, um, the bigger number 10 is the one that needs to be positive. Now that I've got this written in factored form, I can set each factor equal to 0. So for the first factor, I'll subtract 10 from both sides, and that gives me a result of x is equal to negative 10. And for the second factor, I'll add 2 to both sides. That gives me a result of x equals 2. So the correct answer to this equation is letter A.